ServiceNow Knowledge Store team is sponsored by ServiceNow. Here are your hosts, Dave Vellante and Jeff Frick. We're back. We're live from the Moscone Center. This is Moscone South. As you walk in Moscone South, look to the right. The cube is right there. This is the cube. We go out to the events. We extract the signal from the noise. There's, this is our second year doing the Knowledge Conference. ServiceNow is definitely one of the more interesting conferences that we do. Um, you can always judge by when there's a product demo going on in the main hall and the audience, without prompting, genuinely starts clapping and hooting and hollering. That's when you know you're at a, at a good show. You see that at, at conferences like ServiceNow. You see it at Tableau, you see it at Splunk. You got a little bit of that at Red Hat too, but, uh, but ServiceNow, they bake cakes for their customers. It's just a, it's an amazing culture and, and ecosystem that extends from the top of the company all the way through the customer base. And of course, importantly, the ecosystem, and one of the most important ecosystem partners of ServiceNow is KPMG. Ross Rexer is here, along with Greg Horvath. They're with KPMG, uh, one of the early partners of, of ServiceNow, uh, anchor sponsor here at the show, I think for the third year in a row. Gentlemen, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, Thanks, Dave. Dave. It's great. good to be here. Great so be Ross, here. we talked last year uh, at quite some length about the importance of, of ServiceNow to, to your business. You guys have been in early, early on. It's nice to be early. Yes. Uh, you saw, you've been seeing a huge explosion over the last several years. Uh, what, what brought you into ServiceNow uh, uh, so early? Many have waited. You guys got in early. Why, why was that? You know, Dave, I think it's, uh, our, our first indication was that ServiceNow's technology and platform as a disruptor to uh, areas that had been relatively stagnant, such as IT service management, which was the first foray. Um, we, you know, we saw that the ability to, to quickly enable you know, workflow automation are things that, that you know, are, are happening every day out there, and it was a faster way to do that. And what, what really got us excited, though, Dave, was around you know, being able to take our IT transformational capabilities, our business transformation capabilities, and extend out um, these kind of efficiencies into the rest of the organization. As I mean, well. that's really what you guys do, right? That's, you that's transform it. businesses. So this is sort of music to your ears. Although you were taking a little bit of a chance at the time, yeah. um, you know, ServiceNow, small company. You had some big incumbents, really well funded. So it was a good call. Uh, and you've seen ServiceNow. You've seen the vision grow. You've seen the, the the TAM, the notion of the TAM grow from from help desk to even IT service management. And now, especially at this event, last several, you know. A quarters have been talking about enterprise service management, ESM. Um, you guys talk about that a lot. What is ESM? Why is it so important to your customers? So ESM uh, is a lot of things, right? To us at its core, it's, it's a capability um, of uh, allowing uh, first IT, but certainly outside of the IT stack, um, the ability to manage and improve the, the customer experience, engage uh, with the, the end users in a different way than, than you have ever done before around services, all the way through the consistency and the quality and the efficiency of delivering services, be they core IT or you know human resources, uh, you know, finance, legal, et cetera, throughout the stack. So to us, it's, it's a capability that is extensible from the traditional areas of IT and the service management, uh, you know, discipline and legacy there, um, all the way throughout the, the shared services business stack and global business services, as we call it. Now, Greg, you came out of industry. Um, Correct. How prevalent is 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 ESM? Um, what's the adoption looking like, and you know, what are some of the headwinds? Right. Well, that, that's a great question, Dave. I mean, it's very much emergent. If you look at our booth, we use the term, you know, the dawn of enterprise service management, and I think. What's happening outside you know, the enterprise is to a large degree influencing how you need to respond in the enterprise. The cloud, the explosion of the internet, the way people are consuming services in general, given the mobility experience, et cetera, is frankly setting an expectation for how they use corporate services inside. And what I think enterprises are realizing is that traditional older shared service operating models just aren't keeping pace. Um, we need new operating models, new frameworks, new capabilities, as Ross described them, uh, to be able to take advantage of that. So to us, as Ross mentioned, DSM is a capability. Capabilities generally mean methodologies, they mean organizational models, but more importantly, they mean technology platforms, right, to drive and instantiate these new models. And that's where ServiceNow is, uh, 
uh, is, is going with their message of enterprise service management, and obviously we share that point of view. So, Ross, I wonder if you could talk a little bit about you, uh, your role. Um, yeah. are, are you, you know, part channel, I guess, but, but also uh, an accelerant? Uh, to, to adoption, where, where do you fit in the ecosystem? So to us, the sweet spot is um, around the collection of services that KPMG has, uh, which is, you know, extends into transformation of human resources and business functions and doing the advisory work that we do in all aspects of business, right? It's not just operations, it's risk consulting, it's all of our core disciplines that um, we're out there with, you know, our clients every day. Um, and so our, our sweet spot is where we have an advisory relationship with, with a client um, and we can bring something new and add value uh, and innovation to how they operate um, in the ServiceNow technology, you know, the, the go-to-market uh, structure that we have with them um, is, you know, just folds right into that very nicely, right? So when we say we're a channel, you know, as we know, we're not a reseller of any software. Yeah, right. We're an MSP, right. but, um, you know, certainly the, the engagement at the at the field level with ServiceNow's sales executives, um, you know, just enhances the case for the business to, to, to make a decision to, to go with that technology. Right. right, I mean, you walk into a customer, you'll see, you know, I mean, we've described the problem at, at length, yep. you know, at this event. Um, the silos, the tool creep, uh, the inflexibility, I mean, you see this all, all the time, so right. while you're not a, a, a reseller, you can say, hey guys, you know, there's a better way. Exactly. You know, um, but now, let me ask you, when I talk to practitioners, um, in particular, and, and, and SIs, consultants like yourselves, you always talk about people, process, and technology. You always tell me that technology is the, the, the easy part. Yeah, it's people right. and process that are the hard part. But I get a feeling that technology is pretty important in this case. That if you don't have this, well, let me ask you: How important is that platform, that 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 single system of record, um, all the things that ServiceNow is, is right. espousing? Right. Uh, to me, it's critical. It's critical, Dave, because one of the things you find is when you choose to embark on an ESM strategy, that's significant change, right? That's disrupting to a lot of internal service providers. So with that comes operational risk. A good common technology platform that instantiates a method of doing something, instantiates standardization, really helps reduce that operating risk. And when you do that, you can accelerate your business results. You can accelerate time to value. So it's, it's a significant component of that strategy. So Ross, I want to ask you, mm -hmm. ServiceNow talks about how they don't look for shadow IT, they don't end run uh, IT, they right. sell through IT. Yep. How about you guys, you, you, you're doing board level engagements. Sure. Right, yeah. so how does that all, all work? Um, you obviously work with IT, are you, you, do you, are you part of an IT practice? Are you sort of more broadly based? I mean, we can talk about that. So, so we do have a mix, so we have a technology IT advisory uh, practice area where our service now core competency and center of excellence exists, right? That's the structure that it, uh, that we have the practitioners that know how to, you know, implement the technology, do the, the core process work. Um, then in each of our other practice areas, such as risk consulting and the business consulting types that I had, uh, that I mentioned, um, there uh, we have those functional experts that are driven towards their own, uh, you know, methodologies, their own approaches to, to the market that uh, can one pull can pull in the other. So to us, it's it's not one or the other. It's the technology plus it's the functional expertise, and you know together we have solutions that cross those those uh, functional right. practice lines. So last year at Knowledge, the ServiceNow announced this app creator, yep. and I was struck by when I was walking the exhibit hall last night. You guys have a nice booth, and it was very active. I noticed, uh, so it was great. You guys must be happy about that. But I was struck by the booth with all the applications that have been written. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, we talk a lot about pass, and I was talking, we were talking to Jeffrey Moore about the land grab now and the platform yeah. as a service business. Um, where do you see that whole space going? I mean, you guys, obviously, you see the amount of money that's spent on application development. Uh, you're seeing the whole DevOps culture thing, you know, rise up. Um, you know, great value being created, you know, through the application development organization. Where do you see ServiceNow uh, as an application development 
platform fitting into so your customers? So, so we see the you know the share program as a as a great you know mm -hmm. marketing a great evolution in the way that uh, ServiceNow can position you know the use of the platform beyond IT. So that's you know full stop in terms of you know where where we think it's heading. Uh, we, we don't actually have a uh, you know we don't exactly know when the monetization of applications will and what that will look like on ServiceNow. Our own plans are to you know, take our intellectual property, our repeatable business processes, enable them in the ServiceNow technology, deliver that to customers, and, and potentially, or in terms of uh, vision and, and forward thinking, uh, you know, potentially wrapping managed services around that technology so it's a bundled you know, service where KPMG has you know, not just to implement it and give it to you, we can you know, help stand it up, run it, until you're ready and then maybe give it back, but allow that flexibility and agility with our, with our customers. So I mean, right. imagine, imagine a lot of your work today is in Java, right? I mean, everybody's is, right? Is this, is this, do you see this as being complementary, focused on service areas, disruptive, don't know yet? Um, you know, we, we see a lot of, a, a lot of the, the applications, and we call it our asset-based business. Uh -huh. um, you know, we, for now, and I guess maybe it's because we've, We've been studying this for, for a while. It's, it's absolutely complementary uh, to our you know, internal technology capabilities and our vision and standards around technology. So um, you know, where it goes, I guess, as things start to, to explode, pr proliferate, there might be you know, times we have to adjust, but for right now we see complementary technologies, skill sets that are easily you know, reusable uh, uh, across the, the different type of functional areas. And, and, um, but you guys have a service now, Center of Excellence, yeah. is that right? I wonder if you could talk right. about that a little bit and, yeah, and a maybe bit talk about that. why that's important from a practitioner's perspective. Yeah, well, from obviously a big part of our Center of Excellence is really to bring value accelerators to our clients who are making an investment in a service now capability and our ability to uh, you know, anticipate client needs, um, help them, again, get their time to value accelerated quicker, again, reduce implementation risks, our center of excellence is a big part of doing that um, across a broad number of dimensions, Dave. So, so describe the center of excellence in a little bit more detail. So, it's, it's, is it ServiceNow specific, or is it a component of a larger? Yeah. Maybe I can take that one. So, today yep. we announced, Dave, uh, um, our uh, U.S.-based uh, innovation center um, in Denver, Colorado. Okay. Um, so, it is a, you know, it is a single physical location that we are consolidating our. Uh, ServiceNow core platform technology capabilities is where we're bringing an innovation directly within ServiceNow. Uh, ServiceNow is the is one of the the platform or core technologies. Um, the others that we, we have in our vision of end-to-end uh, -end full IT transformation, something we call the business of IT right now, um, which would include you know governance, risk, and compliance for the enterprise uh, beyond IT. Uh, man is something we call managed governance is about you know managing sourcing uh, relationships in a, in a more meaningful way um, and each of those technology we have technology partners for, for them it's all cloud-based um, but uh, you know service now is our, our core anchor as we move into this uh, this new kind of uh, how does a customer tap that e expertise is it sort of through your consultants do they do they tap it directly do you fly them into Denver I wonder if you could talk about that a little bit so um, you know, this, this is stuff that's being built now. We've broken ground. We are assembling our team and, and starting to do work. But our, our vision and the operating model for this is it will be a, a customer innovation center where we will use that, um, that structure to help uh, in the development delivery cycle with clients so they will you know, be able to access that virtually, for example, um, as we're delivering prod projects. Uh, but it's also, you know, the, our plans are to have that be a, a place where, you know, we can bring clients in and innovate and define, you know, strategies and solutions to, to solve, you know, kind of the next generation of, of business outcomes. So it'll be a collaboration center for clients, um, and it's a place where we're going to actually get work done and deliver um, our, uh, you know, our, our capabilities, our technologies to our clients utilizing that center. A big part of your value proposition is you're, you're technology agnostic, yep. right? Uh, even though you've got expertise, even though you, I'm sure, uh, you know, have favorites. <laughs> um, but nonetheless, if the, if the client says, hey, this is where we're going, you know, we want your help, you can help them. Um, so I wonder if you could describe that, that dynamic in the IT 
service management and enterprise service management field, particularly ESM is relatively new discipline, right? right? So it's sort of yeah. I I emerging. Are you helping sort of define some of the, the technology direction? How do you close that loop back to the technology supplier? So, um, you know, in, in some cases, uh, we are, you know, there's, there's a big field out there, right? So you can't say that we are, uh, you know, covering all aspects of the future use of the technology of a platform like ServiceNow, but there are a couple of areas of strength that are priorities with our clients, and, and uh, particularly in the IT GRC space uh, within the platform, as well as, uh, you know, leading business type solutions and you know, human resources, and, you know, the whole employee onboarding and some of those uh, uh, process areas that touch multiple functional areas where we know we've we've got the capability to do that. So, it, uh, you know, through that work, we are, you know, we collaborate with, with ServiceNow. We have a great, you know, bi-directional partnership there. So we are, in some cases, helping to set direction or give guidance and, and advice and are, you know, pulled in to uh, help point a direction of a particular, mm -hmm. you know, application or, or functionality within it. Um, and at the same time, <clears throat> there's so much to be done that there's some areas that, you know, they're just like uh, uh, other technologies and other spaces where we just, we have to go and do it, you know, ourselves because mm -hmm. there's a specific client need and it's, mm -hmm. it's valid for us to do that and we go do it. Last question. So, um, where do you want to see this go? What, what are your objectives for your ServiceNow business? What should we be watching as observers, of, you know, indicators of, of progress and success? You can take a shot and maybe I can Well, a, you know, absolutely. Again, you know, our focus, Dave, is really client success. And as we look at clients who have made investments in ServiceNow, they've driven success in the ITSM space, they're now seeing opportunities beyond that, uh, you know, that's, that's a key area where we can help them go beyond ITSM and address you know, service delivery, service quality, service governance within the enterprise. And when you scale it and you take that perspective, um, you know, there's huge opportunity for our clients, right? So what we're looking at is, is clients who have made investments, how can they take their existing platform and drive it further and generate more business value at the same time, we have clients that have had a shared services model in existence for a while, a global business services model. They're looking at the element of service management saying, how do we get better there? And they're evaluating whether a technology choice can help accelerate that and drive that. So that's an area where we see opportunity as well. Anything you'd add to that, Rob? So, so I'd say from a you know business perspective, uh, you know our plans and, and our trajectory, our growth trajectory internally of the ServiceNow Alliance is that it will become in uh, you know one of the top three alliances of the entire KPMG you know global firm. And right now we're on that path actually, and um, so Absolutely. you know that if we we believe we have a kind of a first mover and a deep capabilities around this whole entire enterprise service management. Um, mm -hmm capability set and uh, you know together with our, our functional areas we expect that uh, you know, over the next couple of years there's going to be a lot of growth and a lot of a lot of client uh, successes you're uh, doubling so down on service management yeah. doubling down absolutely. absolutely all right Greg Ross thanks right. very thanks, much Dave. appreciate Thank you, you guys coming on all right Thank keep you. it right there everybody we'll be back this is the cube we're live from Moscone this is ServiceNow Knowledge we'll be right back <laughs>